Today I'm going to talk to you about switches that I've used in uh, cabinets and doors. These are uh, switches for doors are, are generally designed for 120 volt uh, in the past and uh, they tend to be somewhat expensive and these are some great alternatives. Uh, they have different features and uh, you can review each one for the application you're working on. The first one we're going to cover here is this uh, reed switch here in the center. And uh, in a reed switch, uh, there's a little tube inside. And as you, the magnet, which is in this piece right here, comes apart, you'll see that this light turns on. And uh, that's going to be anywhere from a half inch to an inch. Uh, the distance is going to vary based on uh, your ins insulation, installation. Uh, you're going to see here on the magnet side, there's a little arrow. A lot of times these things have about a half a magnet in them, and this is to make sure that your alignment's right. Uh, you can see sometimes if you're off in your alignment when you close a drawer or something that as you drift um, it either doesn't engage at all or the uh, distance changes somewhat. So when you put them in you do have to make sure you, you uh, line them up pretty well. Now this particular reed switch runs about um, $7 uh, today. It's rated a half amp, uh, a half amp at uh, uh, higher than 12 volts. So at 12 volts it's going to have a little higher amperage. Uh, what happens is if you overload these, say you put a, a go ahead and put a one amp string on there, one, say one meter, drawing one amp, uh, the reed in there will heat up and eventually it'll either stop engaging or it could actually burn out. So um, overloading these is uh, not great. So in a cabinet though, you're generally putting in short lengths and if you're using a low draw uh, piece of LED, um, they're not a problem. Now th the nice thing on this is it does have uh, features on it for normally closed and normally open so you can use it for this or you can use it for a security system and uh, it's nice because you can't buy the wrong one because you have both options so normally uh, this one when it's not engaged is is uh, you'll see that the light turns on when it's engaged the light turns off and that's us using the normally closed uh, contact which means at rest the connection is closed so uh, make sure when you're looking for a reed switch that it uh, does support normally closed so that it functions properly for you. So the next switch I'm going to look at is this switch right here. This switch, uh, uh, a very nice switch. I've, I like the uh, clean finish it presents. It has lugs on the inside uh, which are very, very strong. Uh, this thing is rated at 15 amps uh, at 220 volts. Uh, so you have some entry points available on the side. We have cutouts on the side and the back. This allows you to uh, have, a, as I said, a very clean install. You can run your wire management right up to the side. Also, this little compartment here allows you to actually join multiple wires. Being you're doing 12 volt, the wires are fairly small. Uh, the other thing you'll find is you sometimes can drop the wire right in the center and, and not even see where it's uh, coming in to, to the installation. The holes on this, uh, they're a little bit smaller. You need a, a number four by one screw probably is a good size. Um, longer if you need, but uh, at least a number four by, by one. And uh, it does have a roller on it. So this is nice if you want to install it really close to uh, the, the hinge on the door. When the door closes, because uh, it's going to pinch it a little bit, the roller is going to roll and it's going to keep the pressure off. Now you can hear that this one has a click to it. Uh, something to account for if you... Uh, mine clicks. Uh, it's, it's got about a, a quarter inch full throw here if you uh, uh, so from the time you start depressing it to the time it's in it's about a quarter to five sixteenths of an inch. A uh, very nice unit and uh, the two holes in the front are very good <clears throat> sorry very good in that they uh, grip the edge pretty good so you can get these pretty close to an edge without any problem. Being it's such a small screw it's not an issue. Uh, this is the template I made for it and uh, this allows me to push it up in the in the uh, jam and go ahead and drill the holes so that this shows up exactly where I want it every time. So the next one I'm going to show you is a, a, a limiter switch and limiter switches are entire and incredibly small. This is rated at uh, 5 amps at uh, 100, 250 volts. Sorry, 5 amps at 125, 3 amps at 250 volts. You're using 12 volts DC, so you're pretty much going to be able to power what you want with this. And it's uh, they're very nice. I got this trigger arm right here. You can actually buy this arm in different configurations. This is about a quarter inch throw. It does have the roller on it. Uh, this is uh, it's very nice for small places. It's only a quarter inch thick, and you can get it uh, really close to things. So you need to buy very small screws. I think we're talking about number two. 
Now this also has a normally closed and normally open circuit. So the ones on the end are the normally closed, the one in the center is normally open. And uh, this is uh, very good, I can use it in, I've used it on cabinet doors. Uh, it does have a problem with hiding wires on cabinet doors. I've used it quite a bit in drawers, and uh, uh, the drawers come out really nice. These um, fit in well. And the most attractive part of these, uh, this one I buy from Tempco, is um, about 70 cents for, for one. And uh, so they're solder connections. And versus these other ones where you have uh, the screw-on lugs, uh, solder connections are a little bit cumbersome. And what I've been working on is a way to get around that. And I've kind of come up with this uh, system here where I actually mount the, uh, the the switch on a terminal block and what I've done here is I've uh, I've actually soldered on uh, two pieces of wire and stuck them in the terminal, blo terminal block and I went ahead and cut off the center post because it wasn't needed now actually this works out really well if you're wiring cabinets uh, sometimes you want to wire from one door to the other. So in addition to a couple wires coming in, you may have a set going out to run the other uh, door, plus you need the one that's going to turn the light on. So having three lugs is actually a, a, a good option. Now obviously uh, this uh, also is not hiding things very well. So the other thing I'm playing with is uh, covers that you'd uh, use to uh, cover it. So, and this is just uh, some plastic and right now it's got some double-sided tape on it and uh, that would go over top like that so this also uh, I've made a template for and uh, you want to make sure that uh, you have a left and right if, on these because they're not symmetrical if you're flipping it over so that uh, you know these switches line up perfectly with your cabinet install every time now one thing to keep in mind that uh, the throws on these are because they're so short and and, and even on this one uh, Sometimes on a cabinet door there's a gap and what you may have to do is put a plate on the door so that uh, when you install this it's, uh, it, it has sufficient pressure. Uh, another option thing to consider is when you install these uh, pressure sensitive ones that you possibly consider putting it more towards the hinge so that the weight of the door uh, pushes it closed. So a lot of mounting options with these. Uh, Big cost difference. Um, you know, you're looking at uh, 79 cents here. You're looking at the uh, uh, three to four dollars on this one, and then the seven on that. So those are your options, and um, there are other switches on the on the market. I said a lot of them have been geared towards 120 volt, and they tend to uh, to be a little pricey.